Hello everyone, today's video is going to be about hard drives. There's so many to choose from, so many different options, so I want to help you decide what's best for you and figure out what's what. And so, if you're interested in seeing a hard drive swap, you can check out my two videos in the links below. Swapping out hard drives is actually pretty easy. All you have to do is unplug your SATA connector and unplug your power connector from these two ports here. Once you disconnect that, you pull out your drive, you put in your new drive, you plug in your SATA connector and your power connector, and that's pretty much the gist of it. Now, not all of them are that easy. Some of them have special cases you got to pull the hard drive out of. In IMAX, you actually have to pull off the whole screen and LCD display, but that's, that's your basic understanding and idea of it. So, what is a hard drive? That is where your computer's data is stored long term. This data includes but is not limited to your operating system, uh, your photos, your videos, your applications, and so on. So do you need a hard drive? Yes and no. I'm not going to dive into all the technicalities of it, but just know that most operating systems require a hard drive like uh, Mac OS whereas some versions of Linux operating system they don't actually require you to have an operating system you can run it off of a USB drive or an SD card so there's two categories of hard drives there's internal and then there's external so here's going to be what an internal one would look like and an external one would be something like this so the first internal hard drive that we're going to go over is the hard disk drive what it contains is one or multiple platters that spin around 5400 to 7400 RPMs for your computer. Uh, they do actually make hard drives where the platter spin at over 10,000 RPMs and those are usually used in servers but can be used in computers. While these disks are spinning, there's an arm that actually goes and moves back and forth on the platter so that way that's how you read and write your data. What's great about these is that they're extremely cheap and so you can get a lot of storage capacity for less money than something like a solid state drive. A solid state drive, which is this here, they come in multiple fashions and sizes. Uh, there's no moving parts. If you were to open it up, it looks more like a motherboard. They come in multiple sizes. You've got a 3.5 inch, 2.5 inch, but they also come in the M.2 drives, which we'll cover in just a moment. Uh, these are super fast because there's no moving parts. And this speed also helps with extremely quick boot ups on computers. If you have a computer that is a solid state as well as one with a hard, uh, spinning hard drive and you have them side by side, solid state will actually boot up several times quicker than what the hard disk drive will. Plus, as an added bonus, they're more power efficient, which is great for uh, laptops. Another one is the hybrid drive. It has spinning platters and arms, such as the hard disk drive, but it also has parts of a uh, solid state drive. The purpose is to give you boot up speeds like the solid state drives, but with the storage capacity of a hard disk drive. They're not really recommended all that often. Uh, it's kind of a technology that never took off because solid states are extremely quick and then your hard disk drives are just, you know, they're cheaper for higher capacity, storage capacity. One thing that, they, that hybrid drives are actually good for is if you don't have any space inside your computer for multiple drives and you don't want an external drive, then you can utilize that option. As mentioned earlier, there's the M.2 drives, which are solid state drives, but they're extremely small, as you can tell in this picture. They're referred to as an M SATA drive. Some of them mount directly to the motherboard, while some still use the SATA and power cables. The ones that mount directly to the motherboard are known as NVMEs, which are non-volatile memory express. Uh, these are actually faster than a traditional solid state drive because they don't use the SATA cable. A SATA 3 cable actually transfers data at 600 megabytes per second, whereas the motherboard will actually allow for up to 3500 megabyte per second transfer speed. These are also known as the next generation form factor because they're super small as you can tell. So the other category of hard drives is your external hard drives. 
These come in both hard disk drives and solid state drives. This one here is a hard disk drive and it plugs in via USB 3.0. These can also plug in with, a, with an eSATA cable rather than a USB cable. Uh, eSATA used to be faster, but now that uh, USB 4.0 is coming out later this year, the 4, USB 4.0 is a lot faster than the eSATA. Some of these external hard drives pull power from your computer, while others actually have to be plugged into an outlet. Why would you use an external drive? You could do it to make your files portable, add storage to your computer, especially a laptop. You can also use it as a backup, which is one thing that I do. So when you replace your hard drive, what do you do about your operating system? Beforehand, you want to ensure that you have a copy of your operating system on either a USB drive or an optical disk. For Windows and Linux, what you would do is use one of the function keys to boot into your BIOS, and then you would go into your boot options. You would select the correct boot option, whether you're using a CD or using a USB drive, and then you'll follow the prompts from there. The operating systems typically will walk you through everything. For Mac, what you would do is when you boot the computer, it'll prompt you to install an operating system. And you can either do that via USB or with Mac, you can actually download from the internet if your computer is connected to the internet. As you can see, there are a lot of differences among all these hard drives. But which one's best for you? My suggestion is when you're working on building a brand new computer, or even if you're upgrading an existing computer or server, always install your operating system on a solid state drive. The reason is, is that helps your operating system boot quicker, uh, so that's more of convenience, but also it helps all of your applications run a little bit better, or faster I should say. Uh, use an M.2 if possible. For storage, use a hard disk drive. The platter drives are cheaper to replace should they fail, plus you can get a higher capacity of storage for a lot less money than what a solid state drive would offer. For backing up data, it's a personal preference, but if you go for an external drive, hard disk drives are much more popular, and again, they're cheaper so you can get a higher amount of storage capacity for less money. If you are planning on update, or if you are planning on backing up your computer using Veeam on an internal hard drive, again, a hard disk drive is going to save you a lot of money. What's better between backing up between an internal and external hard drive? It's really personal preference. Uh, external hard drive gives you the portability option. Also, you can take and save your uh, files to that external and then take your external and put it in a safe in a different location, so should something happen to that computer or business or whatever, you still have a physical copy. Whereas an internal drive, sure, it's a lot more convenient. You don't have to worry about it getting damaged because it gets knocked off the computer or knocked off a shelf or something, referring to the hard drive. But the downfall is, is that if that computer gets fried, chances are you lose everything on that hard drive. So really, it's kind of up in the air. For laptops, as far as an external drive, if you're looking for speed and durability, a solid state drive will be the best option. If you're looking for maximum storage capacity without breaking the bank and you're not too terribly concerned about speed, a hard disk drive is your best option. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them below. I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you and answer any other questions, and as always, Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe.